Today, I'm gonna to give you a rundown of my new training program, which is a little bit of an experiment. And then I'll give you a link to download the template for free so you can follow along with me. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome to the first of what I hope is a recurring series of short videos on training, nutrition, programming, really any topic where I can provide advice that helps you either inside or outside of the gym. So we're gonna try this out. And speaking of trying things out, I figured I'd kick off today's episode by taking you through my new training program, which as I mentioned, is a bit of an experiment. So I've been in a rut with my training, lacking motivation. I've been in the gym for over 20 years and I just don't wanna be in there for very long anymore. So I found myself sort of lacking motivation, lacking enthusiasm for training. And I figured after talking to one of my online clients, he was going through kind of the same thing. So we ended up stripping his training program down to where he was only doing one lift a day. And he had an option for assistance exercises, but he didn't have to do them. And just by setting the bar real low for what he had to get done each day to sort of consider the day a victory, uh, his enthusiasm for training came roaring back and he just stopped missing workouts, was doing really well and ended up not only doing the main lifts, but also the assistance lifts. So I thought I'd take a similar approach and see what I could get away with in terms of the amount of work and time I have to spend in the gym to train productively, still accomplish my goals, still feel like I'm making progress. Uh, so. I started with the radically simple muscle training template, which if you don't know, I wrote a book called Radically Simple Strength. It's my take on strength training, nutrition. It's a very comprehensive book. And then more recently I came out with the Radically Simple Muscle eBook, which is a more hypertrophy focused bodybuilding program. So I've done all those programs. I've been running the Radically Simple Muscle program for a long time and I decided to take that template and just start hacking at it until I couldn't cut anything else out and still feel like it was a worthwhile program. So if you're familiar with that template, you'll see when I switch over to taking you through the actual training template, you'll see a lot of similarities. But the basic idea was to focus more on intensity, particularly with the assistance lifts. If you track my progress on the main lifts, you'll see a relatively consistent increase over time. But I noticed with my assistance lifts that the weights I'm using haven't really progressed much. And I thought this would be a good time to prioritize intensity over volume. And you'll see when we get into the training overview, I'll talk more about the thought process behind prioritizing intensity over volume. But I cut a lot of volume out, I cut a lot of exercises out, and I've been running this program for a couple weeks and it's interesting because I feel like, at first I felt like I wasn't doing enough. My workouts were only 45 minutes, like I've timed them, they're almost exactly 45 minutes and I'm not rushing, I'm taking my time, taking adequate rest intervals. Uh, so I felt initially like this wasn't gonna be enough work and it might not be, this is an experiment. So I have not run this long enough to put my stamp of approval on the program. But I found after a couple weeks that I was more excited to get back in the gym. And that's new. I haven't had that feeling in a while. So I'm looking forward to my workouts. Moreover, I'm looking at each set as a sort of, you know, I've got one shot. Because it's so low volume, there's only one or two sets per exercise. I'm finding that I'm pushing harder during those sets to get another rep or put more weight on the bar and get the same number of reps as last time. So it's doing what I hoped in that by reducing the volume, by reducing the frequency, I'm putting more focus into my training and uh, bringing more intensity to each workout. So we're gonna switch over. I'm gonna take you through the whole training program, give you all the details, give you my thoughts, tweaks I'm making, things like that. And then in the description below, you can download a PDF template absolutely free. And if you wanna follow along and try the program with me, you can, or you can just bank it 
uh, for later when you're looking for what to do next or if you hit a point where you're sort of lacking motivation or running out of time and you just want to try something quick. Again, I don't know if this is going to work. It's a total experiment. So you can follow along with me if you want to and I'll definitely keep you updated on my progress as I keep running the program. So let's switch over and we'll get right into it. Okay, I'm gonna take you through the program quickly. Like I said, this is an experiment. I don't know if this program's gonna work. It may not be enough volume. It's a very low volume program, which makes it fast, but it might not be enough to sustain progress. So I'm testing it out. And if you wanna test it out too, like I said, I'll put a link in the description to this video and you can download the PDF for free and you can let me know what you think. Just some key sort of big picture things here. I noticed with my assistance exercises that they haven't really progressed that much. I'll do an assistance exercise for a while, like let's say like a barbell curl. I'll drive the weight up and then switch to something else or go back and play with my technique. And just compared to the main lifts, the assistance lifts haven't really progressed to anything substantial. So I can look back at my deadlift and I can see how far I've come. If I take something like a lat pull down, you know, it's stronger, but it's not noticeably stronger. Or I've certainly been, I'm not in PR territory for those lifts. And a lot of it has just been because of getting distracted with variety and not really paying attention to it. So what I wanted to do here was just pick the best or what I think are the most productive assistance lifts and really focus not so much on reps or sets and reps, volume or variety, but just driving the weight up. So if I can take my curls or, you know, LTEs from wherever they are now to a lot heavier with just one or two sets, let's see if that works. That's sort of the thought process that went into developing this. Let's focus on intensity. Let's focus on driving the weight up with the least amount of sets possible. And uh, we'll see how it goes. So the program is a two week program. Like I said, it's sort of a derivative of the radically simple muscle template. So a lot of, if you've picked up that ebook, uh, some of this may be familiar, but I've hacked it. So I've cut a lot of exercises out and I've cut a lot of the sets out. So let me walk you through how this works. So you can see here, I've got week one and uh, it's a three day program. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, because it's an upper lower split, you can do two days in a row. So you could do workout A and B on Monday, Tuesday, and then take a day or two off and then do the C workout. It's up to you. You could also run it over, you know, if you only want to train two days a week, you could go Monday, Thursday, Monday, and uh, it'll cycle over those two weeks. Very flexible. Um, because it's so low volume though, and it's so short, it's not gonna, it shouldn't be a problem to get the whole thing in and just train three days a week. So that's my plan going into it is to train, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday or something like that. Uh, so starts out with the incline bench press. For me, I think that's one of the more productive variations of the bench press. So I'm saying here, I'm gonna do a, I'm assuming it's an incline barbell bench. I may switch that up to an incline dumbbell bench press, which I think gives you a better stretch. But for the time being, I'm just gonna keep it simple, stick with the incline bench press. Uh, one set of five to eight. If you hit eight, you go up and wait next time. And then one set at 85% for as many reps as possible. So two sets, don't fail. Just, you know, leave one in the tank, but two sets and you're done. Then we're moving on to a row. So for me, a row, now I left row sort of generic, but what I'm doing are lever rows. So if you go to the video section of the website, hornstrength.com slash videos, you can see the lever row tutorial. I use the Iron Master multi-grip handle. There's a link to that on the website. I love that thing. For me, it is the best, most productive back and lat exercise. So the cool thing about that handle is you have the option to use a neutral grip or a prone grip. So each week I'm gonna switch grips because the neutral grip is gonna be more lat and the prone grip is gonna be more posterior delt or it's gonna hit those more than the neutral grip does. So we're gonna cover the lats and the posterior delt. So if you don't have that, you can use a barbell row, you can use anything you want, dumbbell rows, machine rows, 
you know, cable row. I just left it blank or sort of just generic row, but I'm doing a lever row. That's just a personal preference. One set of eight to 10, 90% back offset for as many reps as possible. Done, you move on. LTEs, I've said this a million times, this is the most bang for your buck tricep exercise. In my opinion, it has the most carryover to all the other main pressing exercises, bench and press. So you put someone on LTEs when their bench or press is getting stuck and suddenly it starts to get unstuck. So I, I just keep them in the program. They're gonna be in both weeks. I think that's the best use of my time for targeting the triceps. One set of eight to 10, 85% as a back offset, as many sets as possible, or as many reps as possible, excuse me. Um, if you're wondering about the difference between the 85% and the 90%, I've just found that with back exercises, uh, 90%, a 90% deload is, gets me about the same rep count as an 85% on most of the other exercises. I think there's just a lot of muscle mass in the back, and um, I can usually bang out eight to 10 reps at 90% with a back exercise versus everything else I'm gonna get in the eight to 10 rep range with 85%. So just personal, you may be different, doesn't really matter, just take some weight off and do some reps. Uh, and then finishing off day one with barbell curl, this is one set of eight to 10 plus a drop set. So bang out eight to 10 reps, take, you know, whatever the change plates are. So if you're doing, you know, 75 pounds, you pull off the fives, now you got 65 pounds, do as many sets as you can. If you want to then take off the fives and do 45 pounds for another drop set, you can. I'm just trying to keep this very simple and focus on driving up the weight once I hit that rep count at the top end of the rep range. So if I get 10 reps, I'm going up. Okay, workout B, week one. Squat, three to five reps, 90% back offset for as many as you can. Shoot for three to five. Um, pretty simple. When you hit five reps, add weight next time. And then you're gonna follow that with a light deadlift. Now in the Radically Simple Muscle program, this is 85% for three sets of five. In this program, because brevity is the theme here, <laughs> I'm just doing one back offset at 90% of the heavy day, uh, which is week two for one set of five. And I've been doing that in my own training. I talk about that in the Radically Simple Muscle ebook, how to manipulate light days. So this has been working for me and I'm gonna see how long I can ride it out. Uh, cable crunch, uh, as for an ab exercise, I might do this, I might not, but it's in there, one set of eight to 12, and then 90% for as many reps as I can. Sometimes on workout B, when I'm doing lower body stuff, it's just like, I, the, all I wanna do is squat, deadlift, and go home. Uh, but sometimes I have some energy, and it's like, all right, I'll hit abs, whatever. So it's in there, but you know, if you wanna do it, great. If not, don't worry about it. Okay, workout C, weighted dips, my favorite, chest exercise really, uh, they're in radically simple muscle. I'm keeping them here, one set of eight to 10, take a break, rest periods are gonna be three minutes usually, and then 85% for as many reps as you can. So I'm shooting to hit about 10 with a back offset. Uh, if you have shoulder issues, you know, you may wanna avoid dips, so you may wanna try something, a different exercise, close grip bench press maybe, uh, dumbbell, if you, are doing a incline barbell bench press on workout A, maybe you do a dumbbell flat, dumbbell decline, whatever. I just like dips a lot, just be careful. Uh, weighted chin-ups after that, one set of eight to 10 with weight or body weight, whatever you got. And then if assuming you're doing these weighted, you're gonna just drop to body weight. After a three minute break, do a set of as many as you can. And then dumbbell lateral raises, which are I think the best shoulder builders out there. So I try and do them every week and uh, you don't have to go very heavy. You just gotta get them into the right position where you're really feeling that burn in the in the medial deltoids. So, but normally I would do two or three sets. In this case, I'm gonna do one set of 10 to 15 and then one or two drop sets. So if you're using lightweight, like a 25 pound dumbbell, you might only be able to do one drop set down to like 10 or 15. If you're up 30, 35, you might be able to do two drop sets. An extra note on these, I will take the very last drop set all the way down to partial reps. So I'll do as many as I can on that second or that first or second drop set. And then once I can't hit the full range of motion, I'm just gonna 
stay down here and just take them as high as I can until it's absolutely burning. It's just an old bodybuilder thing and uh, I like the way it feels. I don't know how productive it is, but uh, we're only doing one set. So just take it all the way down. Just keep lifting as much as you can until your arms aren't lifting anymore and then call it a day. Uh, again, the focus here is intensity. Like you got one set, so like one real set, and the goal is to hit the top end of the rep range so you can add weight. And uh, so I'm hoping that this serious reduction in volume gets me more amped up to really tackle and push myself on that first most important set of each exercise. Okay, and then last shrugs, one set, plus a drop set, so you can do these with uh, dumbbells. You can do these with, uh, I don't like barbell shrugs because the bar's kind of in front of you, so uh, if you have a trap bar, that's great. I got some lever arms recently, some what they call jammer arms, and uh, I've been doing it on those because you can, the problem with dumbbells is, you know, you get to the point, the traps are usually pretty strong, so you're gonna exceed the, you know, if, you, if your gym only goes up to 90 or 100 pound dumbbells, you might exceed that pretty quickly, so, Something that's plate loaded, I find to be more flexible. So uh, I've been doing it with the jammer arms and uh, I like it. It's a good position and it just kind of feels good. So we're gonna bang out some shrugs and then strip a little bit of weight off and see if you can get, you know, on a drop set, five to 10 more reps, something like that. And uh, you can do more if you want, but again, the experiment here is in uh, minimalism. So <laughs> I'm always saying one set and a drop set. Okay, so that's week one. And then the next week, uh, very similar setup. So first exercise in week two is a bench press. And so if you did, you did, we did the incline bench the first week, which I think is the best version of the bench press. I use a relatively low incline, about 30 degrees sometimes. Um, if you wanna go up higher to 45, you can. This is gonna be more of a flat bench press. Again, you can pick barbell. I'm gonna do that for simplicity. You can use a multi-grip bar, you can use dumbbells. Whatever you pick, just be consistent with it. Um, if you're gonna do dumbbell work, you might wanna, well, the five to eight rep range for dumbbell bench press is usually okay. It's great for barbells. Um, and so one set of five to eight, and then 85% for as many reps as you can. Then we're moving on to the other version of the row. So I'm doing lever rows, neutral the first week, you know, hand, palms facing each other, prone grip the next week. And again, that's to hit more of the uh, posterior deltoids. So just flipping those around and one set of eight to 10, 90% for as many reps as you can. Tricep extensions again, like I said, this is my favorite tricep exercise. I think it's the most productive. Do you wanna swap in cable press downs or something like that or behind the head rope French presses? Go for it. it this is not, you can make this whatever you want. One set of eight to 10 and then 85% for as many reps as you can. The reason I'm not doing a, uh, you know, drop sets on LTEs is it's just annoying to have to get up, take the weight off, collar it, it takes too long. So we'll just do two sets and uh, call it. Uh, then dumbbell preacher curls. Been using these a lot lately. I really like them. I can feel them. They 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 make my biceps sore in a way that uh, barbell curls don't. And so I've been using them a lot. I do them with a very steep angle. So if you you can do this with a uh, incline bench, or if you have a preacher curl, you can flip around so that your arm is almost hanging straight down rather than at an angle out here. I wanna be over it and have my arm almost perfectly perpendicular to the floor. Uh, make sure you go all the way down on these full stretch. A lot of the stimulus is gonna come right as you start to curl up at the beginning of the rep. So love these. Um, you can do them at the same time. You can do them one arm at a time. You can use an easy curl bar if you want, but for me, the dumbbell just get like one arm dumbbell preacher curls gives me a lot of focus on the bicep. So trying to develop that mind muscle connection on things like curls really seems to be the difference between how much I feel at the next day. Not that soreness is an indicator of a good workout, but sometimes it feels like it is. So um, one set, eight to 10, and then a drop set. You can do more drop sets, but bring two dumbbells over, you know, if you're doing 30 pound preacher curls, then bring over a 20 and just finish and then immediately go in and bang out as many as you can. You might take a little 
30 seconds to a minute and then do the other arm. Um, that's it for workout A of week two. And then we go up to the, the hard day, which is deadlift and squat. So that's workout B, one set of three to five, optional back offset. So this is just like the Radically Simple Muscle Program. If you hit, if you get more than three, you don't have to do a back off. You can, if you, if you don't even hit three reps, then I usually recommend adding a little bit more volume and doing one set of usually about five uh, at 85%. So that's kind of my rule. If I hit three, no back off, it's a little motivation. And if I get two or one, maybe I'm gonna add a little bit of, uh, I'm gonna add a back off set. So that one's optional. Light squats, uh, this is gonna be 85% of the heavy day, two sets of five. I Squats for me tend to do better with a little bit more volume than the deadlift. So just to keep the movement pattern fresh, not rusty, um, I'm gonna go with 85% of the heavy day top set for two sets of five and then just done. Now, normally I do three, but we're trying to save time here. Once again, some ab work if you wanna do it, two sets of hanging knee raises. I highly recommend getting some straps to hang from a chin-up bar so you don't have to, you can do it with just hanging there with your grip or with uh, wrist wraps, but I just like the elbow ab straps. So they're cheap and they make the whole thing more comfortable. And if it's more comfortable, I'm more likely to do it because normally I just want to go home <laughs> after squatting and deadlifting. But uh, so that's in there. And then the final workout is press eight to 10 reps. Now I'm putting press on more of the lighter assistance day because of a shoulder injury. If you want to focus on barbell bench press, or excuse me, barbell overhead press uh, for strength training, you can move this exercise to, uh, you can move it to the bench press here and you can make that the focus. So one week you do a bench press and one, or an incline and one week you do a regular bench press or you can swap it for the incline if you want to. Uh, so standing overhead press in week one, workout A, and then uh, bench press in week two, whatever. It's up to you. I just press for me. I've, I've, it's bugging my shoulder a lot. It's a lot of front delt. I don't, it's not really, I'm losing favor with the press. Now this is cyclical. Maybe I'll fall in love with the press again, but right now I'm putting the press on the back burner and I'm actually doing a lot of uh, seated dumbbell press because it seems to bother my shoulder a lot less than the standing overhead press. Just the arm position for some reason is not pissing it off as much. So my overhead presses right now are seated dumbbell presses. So that's why I put it in workout C in the eight to 10 rep range. If you make it a priority, if you make it a main lift in workout A and you sub it for the incline bench or the bench press, then I would drop that down to maybe eight reps at most. So maybe five to eight for the, I mean, you could even do fives. You could keep this like a traditional strength training program and, and everything in workout A for the uh, bench and overhead press can be just a set of five. So you can even do three to five. I like to do lighter weight upper body stuff because I'm older and uh, the heavier it gets with lower reps tends to, it, my body's a little bit less forgiving. So press here for me is kind of an assistance exercise. I'm not really trying to drive it up. I'm not trying to, well, I am trying to drive the weight up, but not the traditional strength training standing barbell press anymore. So it's up to you, but if you're doing dumbbell presses like I am, it's gonna be higher reps, eight to 10, and then take a break and do 85% for as many as you can, followed by lat pull downs. Um, same deal, you could do wide grip, you could do neutral grip, you could. Do you, you can get a mag grip handle, which I really like, uh, which kind of is a wider, you know, neutral grip. And one set of eight to 10, 90% for, am, for as many as you can. Finishing that off with uh, dumbbell lateral raises again, same deal as last week, 10 to 15, and then one to two drop sets all the way down to just partials, okay? And then one set of those. And then the last one is front plate raises as another uh, trap exercise. So you're just taking a 45 pound plate and there's a demo of this on the website so I don't have to do it in this little circle. Uh, so if you go to hornstrength.com slash videos, you can see the demo of that and you're just taking a 45 pound plate, raising it over your head as many as you can and then you're gonna do a drop set this time. So if you're using a 45, put it down, grab a 25 and just burn it out as many as you can. If you wanna do an additional one, 
uh, you know, or just pause, take a 30 second break and do another set. You certainly can, but I'm trying to get out of here pretty quickly. So that's really it. Um, again, the focus here for this little experiment is to see if I can get away with, a, with, uh, really concentrating on driving up the intensity and, uh, I can always add more sets later. So that's the idea. If I, if I can keep pushing up, you know, the top set of each exercise with just one set and one back off, or in some cases, just one set, then, and the weight keeps going up, then that's great. That means I'm getting stronger. It's working. When that stalls, I then have the option to add more volume. So if I realize that I've been stuck for two or three weeks at the same rep, same weight, um, on the top set and the back off, I can add a second back off. There's a lot of explanation on stalling strategies in radically simple muscles. So that's like a full ebook. I didn't even bother writing a, any text about this program because it, like I said, it's a, uh, it's, I don't know if it's going to work that well yet. So, but we're going to learn. So the key thing here is driving up the intensity, right? We're going to just keep trying to push up that intensity and bringing a lot of focus to that top set. And, uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, guys, thank you for joining me for an overview of the Radically Simple Essentials program. I hope that was useful. Don't forget, you can download a free PDF template of the program in the description below. There's a link. And if you have ideas for future videos, topics you want me to cover, leave a comment or post it up on the Horn Strength Reddit page. I'll keep a running tab going and hopefully I can create more content that helps you guys out. So thanks for joining me on this one, and I'll see you next time.